Now we're going to look at a more challenging problem, um, and, and one that shows up in, in a lot of different variations, right? Um, so the one we have here is, is we're trying to minimize the cost of installing a power line, right? So we kind of as a first step, well, there's our optimization, right? Minimizing cost. Um, so before we can minimize cost, we've got to come up with some sort of equation that describes the cost, right? And, and what are the variables that are involved here? How do, we, how do we set up this problem? Well, we can see that one of the things going on here is that the, the cost of installing the power line depends on whether you're installing it along the shore um, or under the water, right? It's much cheaper to install it along the shore than it is to try to run it under the water. Makes sense, I guess. Um, and, and so there are two extreme possibilities, right? One extreme is that you just go underwater the whole way. Shortest distance, but most expensive, right? Um, in the sense that we're running underwater the whole way, so it's $130 per feet the whole way, right? So, so we're, in this case, we're, we're minimizing the distance, but we're, we're maximizing the amount of distance that is, that is applied at the higher cost, right? We're eliminating the cheaper option, right? Um, on the other hand, we could, we could minimize the amount that goes underwater by going all the way until we're directly across from this facility and then going, going up. Um, but now we're kind of maximizing the amount of, of line that we have to run, and that seems like it's probably not going to work out either. Maybe it would. You can always run the numbers and see what happens, right? It's worth it to check. You know, these are going to be your endpoints as usual, right? So the optimal solution is probably to go a certain distance along the shore and, and then head out across the water, right? So that's, that's the problem that we want to do. Um, and there are a number of variations on these, right? Uh, there, there are going to be ones where you're trying to maybe minimize time of travel, right? There, there are a number, I think, in the exercises where, um, you know, you and a dog are standing on the shore and you throw a stick for the dog to fetch. And the dog, you know, obviously can run faster than it can swim and the dog needs to figure out where to enter the water. Um, turns out dogs are actually surprisingly good at solving this calculus problem. Um, they typically enter the water at pretty much exactly the right place. Um, or, or there's a variation where, um, you know, it's a person, right? Like, like maybe it's a commando or something that's trying to attack an enemy camp and get there as fast as possible. I don't know. There's, um, th there's lots of different ways to make up the story that leads to the problem that we're trying to solve here. Um, and there are a number of ways to try and solve it, right? Um, we've already got sort of a diagram here, but we haven't identified quantities other than we know that that this facility is 1,000 feet offshore and the distance from the nearest point on shore to the power station is 5,000 feet. Those are fixed quantities. We can't do anything about them. The thing we can do something about is this point of entry. And, and there are a number of quantities that we could give that would determine that point at which we enter the water with our power line. We could give the distance from here to here. We could give the distance from here to here. We could give an angle. Right? Um, there, there are a number of ways that we could set this up. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to follow the textbook, and we're going to let x be the distance from the point of entry to this point which is closest to the power station. Okay? Um, it's not the only option. You could have put x over here if you want, but they, of course, um, if this is x, then this bit here must be 5,000 minus x. Right? Um, and one of the reasons that it's nice to do x here is now Pythagorean theorem tells me that this side is the square root of, of x squared plus 1,000 squared. And if we'd done it the other way around, then this would be 5,000 minus x being squared under the square root, and uh, it gets a little bit messier, right? Um, so one of the things that you probably want to do as you're practicing these problems, right, when you have more than one option for how you set them up, um, Try several options. Set the problem up. Um, see which ones are easier to solve. You know, once you've turned it into a calculus problem, some methods are going to give you an easy calculus problem. Some methods are going to give you a difficult calculus problem. Start to develop some intuition on what is sort of the right way to set these up. 
to make your life easier later on in the problem, right? It takes practice to get the hang of this. It takes a certain amount of trial and error. Once you've done enough of these, you'll start to get a better feel for what's the right way versus wrong way to set it up. And not that it would have been wrong to do it the other way around. It's just that our, we, we'd have a little bit more work in the algebra, right? We like to keep things clean if we can, um, keep ourselves out of trouble. Okay. So we've introduced these quantities. What are we, we going to get from this? Well, what are we trying to minimize? Cost. So what is the cost? Let's call it C. So C is going to be, well, it's going to be this distance. That's the distance along land, right? Um, 5,000 minus X. And that's multiplied by 50, right? Don't worry about the dollars yet. Um, plus the other distance, x squared plus 1,000 squared, and that's multiplied by 130. Okay, All right? Distance in feet times price per foot gives us the cost, right? Um, one of the things that changes if you're, uh, if, you're, if you're doing those kind of minimizing the time problems is, is that uh, you end up having to do some division here, right? Because when you're, when you're solving for time, um, you know, so if speed, of course, is distance divided by time, right? And so then time is, is, is going to be, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Right? If you're trying to minimize time, time is, is going to be distance over, over speed. You start dividing by some things. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit messier. So this is not so bad. We've got things sorted out. Um, and already this depends on only one variable, right? X. Um, and we can also say that X must be somewhere between zero and 5,000, right? Those are our, sort of our two extreme cases x equal to 0 is when we run it all the way to the closest point and then go across. x equal to 5,000 is when we just go straight underwater the whole way. Okay, so if we want, we could work out, well, what is c of 0, right? We can, we can work these out. c of 0 is going to be uh, 50 times 5,000 plus 130 times if x is 0 here, Square root of 1,000 squared is just 1,000, 130 times, times 1,000, right? So we can, we can work that out. So this is going to be um, 250,000, right? So 5 times 5 is 25,000 times 10. And then this is going to be 130,000. So this is going to be 380,000. Seems like a lot, right? C at the other end, 5,000. Well, then we're doing 130 times the square root of 5,000 squared plus 1,000 squared, which is 130. We can take out 1,000. This is 5 squared plus 1 squared, 1,000 times the square root of 26. Uh, a little bit bigger than 5, right? So 130,000 times something that's a little bit bigger than 5. Um, so this is something which is, which is bigger than 650, you know. Okay. Big number. Definitely not the optimal solution. So optimal solution must occur at a critical number, right? Let's look for it. So C prime is going to be what? Um, constant. 0 minus 50x, okay, plus. So remember that this is power 1 half, right? So power rule says 130 times 1 half times x squared plus 1,000 squared to the minus 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So try to clean this up minus 50x plus, um, those twos cancel, right? 130x over square root of x squared 
plus 1,000 squared. Okay. So we've got, we can see that there's that x which is common here. In fact, we could pull it a 10x. Um, and I'm going to leave that square root on the bottom. But if I want that as a common denominator, then of course I have to multiply here top and bottom by that square root. Okay, so we're going to have uh, 13 minus 5 times the square root x squared plus 1,000 squared. Okay, critical number is going to happen with this derivative is 0. So one place the derivative could be 0 is at 0. We know what happens there. We've got our value. Right? So now we've got to see well, what's the other possibility. So the other possibility is that um, we could have 13 equal to 5 times the square root of x squared plus 1,000 squared. Right? Um, so if we divide by 5, we multiply. 13 squared is 169. 25 x squared plus 1,000 squared. I feel like I've done something wrong, right? Definitely done something wrong because that doesn't give me a solution. So where did we go wrong? Let's see. Let's make sure I haven't messed up. This seems okay, right? That seems okay. Taking the derivative, we're going to get negative. Ah! Of course. There's no x there, right? We took the derivative. x is gone. x is gone. It's just negative 50. So there is no x here. OK, so let's, let's try to be better at math. c prime is going to be. So we're going to have that 1. Well, let's pull out the 10 still. But then we're going to have. 13x minus 50 root x squared plus 1,000 squared over the square root of x squared plus 1,000 squared. All right, the algebra gets kind of gross on this one. Um, so now that puts an x there, all right? OK, now that makes things a little bit more interesting. Um, keep that 25 over here. 25x squared, 1,000 squared times 25. OK, subtract things over. We get 144x squared equals 1,000 squared times 5 squared. We take square roots. Uh, 12x is equal to. 5,000, so x is 5,000 over 12. So we should go 1 12th. So this x should be 1 12th of the distance, right? Um, and last thing to do, of course, and we, I don't have a calculator handy, so I'm not going to do it. Last thing to do, take that number, plug it back into the original function, see what value you get out, make sure that it's less than 380,000 and 650,000. I'm quite confident that it will be. Um, again, if you want to verify that you've got a minimum, you can come down here and you can check to see that indeed your derivative is going to go from negative to positive at that critical number so that you've got a minimum, right? You can double check that. Um, okay, so that was a bit of a challenge. I messed up the math. Um, it's funny that. We know that the derivative of x is 1. Somehow, once you get into these more complicated problems, you mess up the simplest things, right? So you got to pause. Be careful. But you do have some sort of sanity checks along the way, right? If you're trying to calculate this distance and it comes out to be negative, you know you're doing something wrong. So you can go back and see what you need to fix.